Hello friends, this is your teacher Hira Gupta, assistant professor in the Department of Basic Science and Humanities. My contact number is 8972618401 and you can write to me at hirk.hu at the rate acwb.edu.in. Today we are going to have a session on English grammar and the course title for this paper is Effective Technical Communication and Business English and Communication. The course codes referring to the title paper are HU101, CEHS301, HMHU501 and MCHU501. Well, students, we know that grammar has a lot of aspects to it. It has verbs, it has adverbs, tenses, speech, adjectives, and today we are going to focus on prepositions and the rules of prepositions. So first, let us try and understand what do we mean by a preposition or what are prepositions. Well, prepositions indicate relationships between other words in a sentence. Many prepositions tell us whether something is or when something happened. Most prepositions have several definitions, so the meaning changes quite a bit in different contexts. And we can say that ending a sentence with a preposition is not always a grammatical error. So in a way we can say that prepositions help us to build the relationship between two words. Say for example if I am saying keep the book on the table. So I am trying to build a relationship between the words book and the table and where the book is supposed to be kept. So the words that we generally use the words that we generally know as prepositions are in, from, for, on, of, under, by, at, with, over and many more. We often say the pen is on the table. What is the time? By your watch. I met him at Delhi. He lives in Kolkata. From where did she come? There is a mouse under the table. For whom do you want to buy the shirt? With whom did he go to school? Is the class over? So there are different ways we can use these prepositions. To have a better understanding of it, let me try and give you an example. Vampires, zombies, werewolves, where? Behind you. Thank goodness we have prepositions because behind again is a preposition. Imagine if we do not have prepositions, we never knew where the danger is. Where are the vampires, zombies, werewolves? We would have never known if we have not coined the word behind as a preposition. So prepositions tell us where and when something is in relation to something else. When monsters are approaching, it is good to have these special words to tell us where the monsters are. Are they behind us or in front of us? Will they be arriving in three seconds or at midnight? So that was a joke, but in real sense, prepositions often tell us where one noun is in relation to the other noun. For example, the coffee is on the table beside you. So here we have three nouns, the coffee, the table and you. So the coffee and the table, the relationship is built by the fact that the coffee is on the table on being the preposition. Similarly, the relationship between the table and you is that the table is beside you. 
but they can also indicate abstract ideas such as a purpose or a contrast for example we went for a walk despite the rain so the relationship was the purpose for the walk we went for a walk and the contrast was that although it was raining yet we went for a walk so the word despite is used to make us understand that although it was raining yet we went out for a walk now let us try to understand what are the different types of prepositions prepositions might indicate direction time location and spatial relationships as well as other abstract types of relationships direction for example look to the left and you will see our destination so looking to the left is indicating a direction an example of time we have been working since this morning so since is the preposition that makes us understand the time as long as we are working an example of location we saw a movie at the theater so at is the locational preposition that makes us realize that we watched the movie at a theater and space the dog hid under the table so which space of the table is understood by the preposition under now there are several other examples like this say for example into the box out of the box around the box away from the box towards the box past the box onto the box off the box over the box now when over the box happens is when you jump from one side to the other side of the box without sitting on the box under the wall through the pipe across the bridge up the stairs and down the stairs so all these are different kinds of prepositions that we use to make us understand the position let us have some examples however before moving into examples uh, it's unfortunate that there is no reliable formula for determining which preposition to use with which particular combination of words so it happens to be that the best way to learn the prepositions is to go with which word is to read as much as high quality of writing as we can and we pay attention to which combinations sound right you need to says it is said that you should have a year for english why is it said that we should have a year for english because your year makes you feel whether the word is right or wrong so here are some examples of the most common prepositions used in sentences for example i should rewrite the introduction of my essay sam left his jacket in the car did you send that letter to your mother so here in case of of in the second sentence in and in third sentence that and to are excellent examples of prepositions that build a relationship between two nouns now we often have a habit of confusing ourselves between in on and at especially with reference to time and location so this chart will make you realize where to use in on and at in case of time and location when it's a generally bigger time or a bigger location we tend to use in 
let's say for example we are saying in the 1800s in 1970 so we are trying to speak of a bigger time of a general big bigger amount of time similarly when we are speaking of a bigger space say for example in London in England in India we use in on the contrary when we try to be more specific and we try to speak on smaller aspects of time and space say for example if I say on my birthday or on last Friday or on the 7th of March similarly in case of location we will say on the corner on the Oxford Street so these are the examples which are comparatively more specific and there we try to use on instead of using in or at and at is used when it's very very specific say for example we are saying you have to wake up at 7 a.m. every day so you are being very specific at the time that is why you are using the word at the class starts at 9 a.m. or the, as per location is concerned we are very specific he stays at 734 Oxford Street we are being very very specific there so that is how we realize the difference between in on and at speaking of time again as I have been discussing on the day on is used for days and days like on Tuesday on 5th of April on a Christmas Day on a New Year's Eve on Independence Day etc etc for a longer period of time we try to use in as in case of in 2010 in the next century in the ice age in the middle ages in summer in the past etc and at is used at the time of a day say for example at sunset or at sunrise or at bedtime or at midnight or at lunch time so we use at at a particular time of a day so this is another way of looking at on in and at the three very very confusing prepositions for all of us let us now try to move towards understanding with some more examples we were cooking for 10 guests tonight Dan ate lunch with his boss you know you can also use tools like Google engrams and see the prepositions that most commonly occur with particular words but always remember that this tool cannot explain the difference in the meaning between the different prepositional phrases like pay for means to purchase I am paying for this wallet and pay off means to buy bribe so for that what we need to do is we need to refer to the list of prepositions that include meanings of common combinations let us try to look at this the prepositions of movement two it is generally used to indicate a destination or a direction for example the boys go to school in groups two words in the direction of something something or someone she pushed her face towards him generally is used to signify a movement from one side to another but in something such as a long grass or a forest David walked slowly through the woods similarly the preposition into is used to signify movement that enters a space usually with a verb that expresses the movement do not put new wine into old bottles 
the preposition over the movement at a higher level than something else he jumped over the wall similarly in the case of across the movement from one side of something to the other side the truck skidded sideways across the road so these are some basic examples of prepositions of movement and let us come down to the fact how do we end with a preposition there is an old claim that it's wrong to end a sentence with a preposition but this saying has been utterly debunked it's not true and it never was true writers who always insist that a preposition cannot end a sentence often end up with very stifled and unnatural sentences say for example the sentence there is no one else to hide behind it's grammatically correct and completely natural if we don't want to have the word behind which is a preposition at the end the sentence might look like there is no one else behind whom to hide which is grammatically correct but sounds a bit unnatural so we generally tend to use the sentence there is no one else to hide behind and we end with a preposition because that sounds natural similarly in case of the sentence where did we you come from which is grammatically correct and completely natural but then if we don't want to have the preposition from at the end and we frame the sentence like this from where did you come it's again grammatically correct but if you are not starting with the wh word it sounds a bit unnatural so nowadays we say that ending with a preposition is completely fine and you know it's sometimes more elegant to move a preposition to an earlier spot in a sentence especially in very serious and formal writing but if you do move the preposition remember to delete it from the end say for example this is something we must meditate on now here the preposition on is at the end if we want to remove it from there the sentence might sound like this is something on which we must meditate however the sentence should not sound like this is something on which we must meditate on so in the last sentence we are actually using the preposition two times which is unnecessarily and which is very very unnatural also so if we at all want to change the position of the preposition from the last to the middle of a sentence we must be very very careful that we remove the preposition that is at the last here are some more examples ending a sentence with a preposition can you end the sentence with a preposition yes you can definitely but it is a scenario i have not thought about this might annoy one person in five might but when i say it is a scenario about which i have not thought it sounds contrived it doesn't sound good so if we are planning to shift that preposition from there we have to reframe the sentence by saying it is a scenario i have not considered so that is another very very important thing in case of a preposition that if you want to change the preposition from the terminal position to bring it to the middle of the sentence we might sometimes even need to reframe the sentence altogether so as to that the preposition is not at all required in the sentence in that sense now let's speak about some unnecessary prepositions one of the most common prepositional mistakes 
is adding an unnecessary preposition to the end of a question. Where is your brother at? I mean, what's the reason for adding that at a determinal position? Although this is very common in some English dialects, it's considered to be an error in writing. What we can do is we can fix this problem by simply deleting the at and we can say where is your brother. On the brighter side, if you are not sure which preposition to use, sometimes you can just get rid of it altogether. In fact, you should always try to get rid of unnecessary prepositional phrases. Well, a preposition is a bad word to end a sentence with, with being a preposition. Which room is she in? Here in is a preposition. What are you pointing at? Here again at is a preposition. So what I'm trying to say here is that we are trying to use prepositions in different ways but again the bottom line is we have to listen to it and understand whether it's sounding good or not. Let's come down to the usage of prepositions. Too many prepositions can be a sign of flabby writing. Look at how many prepositions appear in a sentence below. Let us take this sentence as an example. For many people, the reality of an entry into a new era of employment is the cause for a host of anxieties. So the sentence has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven prepositions. And naturally, the sentence becomes a bit flabby. Getting rid of prepositions forces you to tighten up the sentence. The result is shorter, more direct, and easier to understand sentences. And that is what is the goal of communication, to communicate most effectively. So instead of writing a sentence like for many people the reality of an entry into a new era of employment is a cause for a host of anxieties, we can just write it as changing careers makes many people anxious. It's simple, it's lucid and it's extremely communicable. Let's have another example. Alex hit the baseball up over the fence. Well, why do we need that up there? We can just get rid of that up and we can write it like Alex hit the baseball over the fence. Right, so I hope you people have understood that the excessive usage of prepositions is not very, very recommended. Let's now come down to the last part of it. And this is a very, very simple guideline to understanding how to use prepositions. You have the answers at the side for your reference, but don't look at the answers. Try to answer the questions by yourself. My pen is superior than yours or to yours. Whom was she talking with or whom was she talking to? This is the more interesting out of the two or of the two. Wisdom consists of doing the right thing at the right time or wisdom consists in doing the right thing at the right time. Well, students, I hope all of you have understood prepositions very well and if you have not, you can definitely ask me by writing a mail to me at my official email id which is hirak.hu at the rate acwb.edu.in or you can even call me or whatsapp me at my contact number which is 89726 I hope you people have enjoyed through the session and you people will be very comfortable with using the prepositions from now onwards. Thank you all. Have a great day.